Hi and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and today I'm sharing um, another Patreon Workshop Wednesday workshop with you um, just to give you a taster of what we get up to over on Patreon. Um, so follow the link below if you're interested in joining us. So a practical demo, just playing around with paint and a couple of blues just to see what happens. Um, most of you know that recently I have been using this kind of spontaneous painting method to experiment and explore things that I'm interested in finding out more about. Um, and that's a kind of um, an exercise that I do and I divide my paper up and then I just play around with the colours that I've chosen and explore the theme. Today it's exploring the theme of painting atmospheric blue skies. Um, so I'm going to, first of all, use um, a waterproof marker pen just to put in some faint suggestions, really rough. I'm not thinking about it. In fact, I'm trying not to think much at all. Just putting in a few sort of rough land shapes across the bottom because the sky is my focus today. I just want a bit of context for creating these skies. And I don't want to overthink the skies either. I want to just splash some paint on. I'm going to be using Prussian blue, which is a really strong cold blue, and indigo, which is a dark blue, um, a nice warm one. So I'm just wetting the page, leaving some dry patches. Um, my marker has run um, a little bit because it didn't dry, but I'm not unhappy. As I say, this is an experiment to see how the colours work together that I've chosen. To support my blues, I'm using raw sienna because I think it's a classic colour to marry the landscape together with the sky. So you get that pale glow in the clouds and that's what I'm hoping that this will give me. The other colour I've chosen is burnt sienna because I felt I needed a brown. Please feel free to use any colours that you like for these experiments. Use brighter, stronger, bolder blues if you want to. An ultramarine or a cobalt blue would be wonderful for these experiments. Or if you're feeling very brave, a cerulean blue. And I'm getting greenish tinges from my burnt umber, but I don't mind. Just using my Princeton Aqua Elite wash brush. You can use a harky brush, any wash brush for this, even a large flat. And now I'm sweeping in some indigo. So I'm just picking up tube consistency paint, hardly any water, and just slapping it onto the wet page. I left some patches dry, as I always do, because I like to see how the paint and water flows and reacts um, as the edges butt up against dry paper or wet paper, just allowing one thing to flow into another. And you can see I'm trying to keep my blues as strong as possible whilst introducing other colours just so that I can experiment. Change to a mop brush, just do a little bit of softening around a few edges. I know it all looks a little bit of a mess at the moment, but I'm more than happy to make a mess. It's how I find things out. It's how I discover. It's how I experiment. So look, I've covered a... The little end of my fine liner now um, with some tissue and I'm dabbing out a few little either suns, moons, whatever you want from the clouds because the way the raw sienna has worked here it makes me think of sun bathing clouds in golden light so I'm just putting those those suns in and that will help to sort of make me see how these skies are progressing just maybe a little bit of extra dark across my land just to make the skies stand out even more. I'm really happy with my shadows here. I'm very pleased with the way these huge great banks of clouds are rolling in in front of the blue skies and the different shades of blue that I've got from the Prussian blue mixed with indigo is very interesting. So again just establishing a little bit more landscape here. And this sort of um, open-ended intuitive play around a theme is really important and you can make some huge breakthroughs and massive discoveries 
things that you really like that you can take forward into your more planned paintings. Um, a lot of these wet in wet techniques um, happen sort of quite randomly on the page, but you can see when they happen and why they happen and then work hard to be able to repeat those um, when you want those sorts of effects in future paintings. So it wouldn't be um, a me experiment if it didn't have some palette knife scraping through it. So I've just created a bit of extra texture in my land by scraping through the damp paint. And now using a rigger brush just to pull some paint across here and there. Um, just pulled some across um, that little sort of sun there so it looks like there's some, some cloud obscuring it. So I'm just about done now and what a mess, eh? But how much fun was that? I really enjoyed that. I love those colours, the way they work together. And that's the secret of this sort of thing. Use the colours that sing to you or try and find some out through various experiments. Ones that you feel awkward using, then stop using them and change to something else. That's how you find your colours and your colours are going to be amazing because you'll produce some amazing results with colours that you really feel a strong affinity to. So here it is, it's dry and um, I'm going to remove the washi tape first, then the masking tape and hopefully that will reveal something a little bit more um, organised and promising than the mess that we can see with the tape still on. I'm already beginning to see where the brush strokes have been taken off the paper um, and giving us that sort of continuity of natural loose brushwork that sort of those sort of expressive marks um, when we're just playing rather than tentatively trying to make an exact um, shaped brush stroke that adds so much more life into the painting and i'm really pleased with all four of these <coughs> excuse me um, even though I wasn't trying to make a finished painting, I think all four of them have their merits. I think all four of them have atmosphere and, and certainly a lot of freshness, you know, and a lot of drama, which is what we were looking for in these blue sky paintings. Um, looking closely, you can see these huge banks of cloud, while not perfectly painted, they have movement and they have life. And that's what this kind of experimentation is all about. Um, I wouldn't try and reproduce any of these paintings exactly. You couldn't do that again, but I can try and take this same atmosphere forward into future paintings. I'm going to put these four little explorations into my landscape sketchbook and make some notes about what I like about them and what I want to carry forward, what I want to remember. It's really important, I think, when you experiment to... Um, record what it is you like about them but also you can record anything that you don't like about them and these things will help you to move forward in your work. So here's the first two and I've recorded the colours that I used that was Prussian blue, burnt umber, raw sienna and indigo and I've recorded that they make me think of sort of winter and dawn um, that are, there's lots of light, especially in the one on the left, with soft shadowy clouds. And the subdued landscape um, is covered in shadow in both cases. And I've noted that in the painting on the right, um, there is less light in the sky and more shadows. Um, and that in itself is an interesting thing to note. I like them both and they both make me feel quite calm and quite tranquil. Um, even though there's drama in the skies, there is a sense of quiet peace about them. And um, well, that's how I respond to these paintings. So let's have a look at the next two. These two are much more dramatic and which is why I um, stuck the paintings in in the order that I did. Um, there's still soft blue skies, but much more dramatic. I've written stronger cloud shapes with the light on the land. Um, and the fourth one, I've written heaps of clouds, softer blue sky, bursts of paint and blooms that add drama. So if we um, look a little bit more closely, um, if you want to, you can pick apart the paintings or studies, really. You can see where all the blooms or cauliflower marks and runbacks are. You can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can sort of see where there's blotchy paint that's been applied maybe a bit too thickly and I've gone outside of the lines. But for me, that's not important. I'm not looking for exact uh, paintings 
Um, I'm not looking to replicate what I see around me, but I'm looking to interpret it and express it in my own way. And I'm really pleased with these experiments. I think they've moved me a little bit further. I'm currently working on a series of paintings exploring my coastal landscape, fairly abstract ones, but still with their roots in reality. And this exploration of sky has moved me a little bit closer towards creating um, maybe the next couple of paintings in the series. So after recording this workshop for you, I went back into the studio and um, painted uh, for myself using what I've learnt here and trying to put that into practice. And I've come up with um, a couple of um, panorama style paintings. This panorama shape is something that I'm using in my new series of coastal paintings. So here they are. I haven't seen them without the tape. So let's have a look together. Let's remove the tape and see if I've got anything interesting here. Um, I'm liking the look of it so far. Um, so the washi tape comes off and then I'll remove the masking tape around the outside. And yeah, I'm pretty pleased with those. I really like the freshness, the spontaneity, the drama. And you can see that I've moved away from using such bold blue in the sky. I've gone back to my really dark, um, desaturated, subdued, but dramatic colors that I prefer to work with. But I think I've still kept a lot of light in these paintings. So here they are, just against a whiteboard, so you can see them a little bit more clearly. And I hope you can see how I've developed the ideas that I got and discovered in um, the first part of this exploration. <clears throat> Excuse me. And rather than trying to um, copy any of the paintings that I created in the exploration stage, I've taken the ideas, some of the effects, the feelings, and um, just the general atmosphere that I wanted to create forward and try to express that in these larger, um, more dramatic and more finished paintings, which I'm really pleased with. And I think both of them are probably going to be in the series. I haven't named them yet, uh, but I will come up with names. I've got a few things in mind, but I'm just going to let them mull over for a little while and see what I come up with. So I hope you enjoyed that exploration um, for creating um, some sort of more atmosphere in blue skies and that you'll have a go at maybe some similar experiments with all sorts of different blues and colours that complement them and just see what happy accidents and amazing effects you can come up with through experimentation, fun and exploration. So that's the end of um, this workshop Wednesday and I hope you on YouTube enjoyed um, watching um, what we get up to on Wednesdays over on Patreon. If you'd like to join us for more similar workshops, then follow the link below. And um, if you join Patreon, <coughs> excuse me, you can just use the tag Workshop Wednesdays to bring up all the associated uh, workshop content that I've produced this year, which builds into quite an interesting and informative set of workshops for exploring um, loose watercolour painting. So thank you so much for watching. Please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thanks so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. So I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.